This demonstration talks about the panel router. Now the panel router is simply a handheld router that's been bolted onto this sliding machine. So this will go up and down. And there's a counterweight in the back. It's painted blue. Now the panel router simply cuts dados. And you can see on this board, we've used it many times, just cuts grooves, like for a shelf in a bookcase or something like that. Now whenever we cut, say we need multiple cuts, we always want to start on the left side cut and then work to the right. So if I have multiple cuts, I'll cut one, move it to the right, cut one, move it to the right, cut another, and so forth. The reason we do that is because if you're using a pattern, my patterns are located on the wall just behind the panel router. If you're using a pattern, that tends to have to go down to the right because it has to lock onto a pin, which I'll show you in just a second. So whenever you're cutting dados, move down to the right. Now, when you put this board in, it sits on this ledge right here, it's white. Now if I have a ton of sawdust under there, like all the other machines, make sure to blow that away really quick. If I have a lot of sawdust there and I put it on top, then the board comes up off of the ledge just a little and now my cuts are going to be angled. So make sure that that's cleared as best you can. The way that we cut, we're always going to cut upward. There are two handles here on the sides that I want you to grab and lift with both of them. If I lift with just one of them, then it tends to skew it. It slightly pulls to one side and it's harder to lift up. And it does move the bit just a little bit to one side or the other. So I want you to do it in, with two hands. Now, it will work if I push down. It will cut and it does a pretty good job cutting downward. The problem is the way that the blade is spinning, if I cut the wrong way and I go down, it takes all that sawdust that I'm cutting out and throws it up into the air and I pretty much get covered completely from head to toe. Now if I start from the bottom and go upward the way I'm supposed to, then it all goes downward into the chute that catches it and sucks it away with the rest of the sawdust. So you always want to cut pulling upward. It's kind of funny when someone goes downward, I know, but you want to go upward because pieces go flying and that's why we wear safety glasses because it is going right in front of your face. Um, we need to have, you can see two clamps. There's one clamp here and one there. They both have red handles. If possible, clamp it with both, but at least have one clamp. Now on these, you just got to lift straight up. It's easy to pull out and pull this little knob off. I know that, but lift straight up and you'll feel it click in place. And then reach over and click that on as well. At least one. Two is better. Now if I have a smaller piece of wood that I'm afraid that will start lifting up. Now if I pull too hard on this, this board may actually lift up off the ledge and I've seen it a couple times. You can go to where all my clamps are and put another clamp here clamping it there so it gives you some extra support to keep it down on the ledge. So if you need to clamp it again, that's okay. Go ahead and stick an extra clamp on. It's not going to hurt anything. Better safe than sorry. The panel router is set to cut a dado one-fourth of an inch deep which means this is a three-fourth inch thick piece of wood. So when I cut a quarter of an inch out, I have a half an inch left, which makes measurements a lot easier. Dealing with half inches is much easier than quarter or eighths of an inch. On the panel router, number six, if we're freehand cutting, what I mean by that is I'm not using a pattern. I'm simply, I've got a mark here somewhere and I'm putting it in and then locking it and cutting. There's no pattern, I'm just kind of guessing. Make sure <coughs> Now when you mark it, you typically have two sides that you're marking. Put them together side by side and then mark it with two lines, one there and one there. If I just mark it with one line, say here, where, where is my cut? Is the groove going to go above it? Is it going to go below it? Is that dead center? I don't know. I need to know because when I set this up, there's my two lines there and there. I put this into the machine, I need to be able to see that these two lines line up with the cut that's already there. So when I'm finished, this lines up and I know that my piece is going to be cut in the right place. Same with the other piece. Make sure that they're marked evenly so that my shelf when I'm done isn't tilted at all. And then lock it in and you're ready to cut. Now say I have to pull this out of the way to get it locked in place. And there's the other one. This will bump into it. Now I already mentioned I do not want to cut going downward. So here's what you got to do. Simply grab the end, pull it out, and this is on a hinge, and then push it down all the way. And now you're ready to cut. 
Now here's what it looks like. Here's how I want you to do it. Put this right there. You stand here. The switch is directly on top of the router and then lift. Okay, so if I lift that out of the way, it leaves me a nice clean dado, a nice clean groove top to bottom. Now you saw that I left it running all the way up and all the way down. Because if I go too fast, it'll tear pieces out. It'll, it'll rip through the board instead of slicing through the board. Too slow and it may start to give you a burn. It's, it's hard to say. With a nice sharp bit, it's pretty easy to go kind of quick. But it does kind of clean it out as you go back across it on your downward stroke as it's going back down. So then when you're done, unlock it, move it to where it needs to be next, lock it, and do the same routine over and over and over again. So on the next question, if you're freehand gutting, make sure to mark it with both lines and that they're even. We can make what's called a stop dado. Now, a stop dado is simply a groove that goes all the way up and then stops about an inch or so before the edge of the board. There are reasons that we do that for cabinetry and some other projects. So it's not common that we have to do the stop dado. But if you need to, mark where you need to stop and I can see the tip of the bit right there. That's where I need to stop according to my line. Then all you've got to do is loosen this little bracket up here and bring it down. Tighten it back up. And now, every time I cut, I will stop at that specific spot every single time. That way, I know that it's repeatable. I can do it over and over and over again and they'll look the same. That's called a stop dado. This is called a stop. It's a simple, simple little stop, piece of metal with a bolt on it. So I'll slide that back up. We don't use it often, but it is here if you do need to make a stop dado. Um, if the blade does start smoking, it's the same reason as all the other machines. Either the blade is dull or you're cutting a bit too slowly. <clears throat> uh, just let me know. I have a couple of extra blades that I can quick change it out. The material that cuts best on this machine, particle board, masonite, now you don't like this stuff, and plywood. So particle board and plywood are my two big ones. That's what we want to cut. Yes, this will cut solid wood, but it gives you a little more tear out than some of the other machines. So if you need to cut a solid piece, let me know and I'll, I'll make sure that it's set up to do a, a good cut. When you're done cutting, put the router all the way down to the, to the base so that the next person isn't tempted to cut downward. Uh, make sure that it's down so that they're ready to cut upward for their next project. The panel router saves us a lot of time, especially if you've got large pieces of wood that you need to cut dados in. That way we're not trying to freehand it with a, with a handheld router or a table saw, which can be clumsy sometimes. So panel router saves you a lot of time and gives you a, a nice, clean, straight dado every cut.